queens, welcome back to another episode of Style Unlocked. Each month, I'm gonna sit down with super stylish individuals. We're gonna dive into their personal style journey. They're gonna take our fashion trivia, maybe roll some celebrities or two. We'll get into it. But I hope these conversations help you unlock your personal style. From authoring her own eBooks, co-hosting her podcast, Just Us Pod, to serving as an equity consultant, mental health advocate, and overall fashionista, she truly does it all. She practices and preaches work-life balance, isn't afraid to speak her mind, and lives her absolute best life. Her background in law and public policy comes as no surprise, given her passion surrounding marginalized communities and social injustice. Please welcome my next guest, Shira, also known as Politics and Fashion. Love it. So that's my intro. Do you want to give your own intro to the Ooh. people? So. It, first of all, it, it was, and I'm so grateful for that. Uh, I feel like I should have paid somebody to give that's such okay. an amazing intro. We can invoice Thank you. you for doing it. Oh, no. Oh. I was just, <laughs> my money ain't long like yours, girl. <laughs> but um, uh, what would I add to it? I am a country girl. Oh, that, I think that's very important. Oh, as we go through this episode, I just go pop out. <laughs> so I think that's very Let's put From that the out there. Out, raised in the church. And I think it Oh, comes, all that. Yeah. yeah. It comes out naturally. But I like to, to anchor myself in that too, because it's an important part of who I am. I love that. Thank you. Go through our outfits really quick. Yeah. What are you wearing? I'm wearing a little bit of the Yusuf's, their collab with Ami Woods. Gorgeous. In my ears. I love the asymmetrical. Oh, yes. Yeah. My gold girl, of course. Top is by Pixie Market. Uh, Bust Down Wrist is a little free maiden, also black owned, Cartier. Um, small business here called Ermine, Yerman, all the things, y'all. All the things. Um, and yes. then my jeans are black owned, a brand called Abbey or Abbey Project. And then my shoes are Bottega. Period. We'll link all that below. We'll try our best. <laughs> um, I don't have on any jewelry, but my wedding ring. Um, Marine Sarah, which is very old, but I love this. The color, it's the color I for me. So I'm get to tattoos. So this is all I got. Um, and Attico jeans and my socks. I don't have on shoes. We're gonna start with uh, a game. I'm competitive, so I'm Aries, okay. Yeah, there's no, there's no trophy. <laughs> So this game is called Rate It. I'm going to name a category and you're going to tell me who or what is overrated and underrated. Celebrity style. Whose celebrity style is overrated oh, okay. and whose is underrated? Oh, Come girl. On, spill tea. Oh God. Overrated, I've said this in my Quiet Luxury video. I don't know who told Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen that they were. The, those girls? <laughs> oh. I, it, the it, look like, of disgust. Just want to chase them around a parking lot with the vanilla wafer, you know? <laughs> Those are only two? Um, um, uh, I feel like <laughs> there might be. I, I would put a category, mm. um, most of the Kardashian slash Jenners, because so much of it is rooted in cultural appropriation. So there's something I think about like a lack of true talent. Speak on it. That comes across and that like it's very glaring to to me. Mm. And, and I think we just gotta call a thing a thing sometimes. Mm, call a spade a spade. You see what I'm saying? And there are other people who I'm sure fit in that category if I thought hard enough that I can. Yeah, yeah. Make. Let's leave some for the next guest. Thank you. And who is underrated? Who's celebrity style where mm -hmm. you're like, why is no one talking about? I'm a city girl. Florida born, Florida bred. When I die, I'll be Florida dead. Oh, yeah, a hundred percent. Just like saying of the... I know. I just made it up. I have a lot of pimp in me. The people who have been styling Young Miami and JT, like they know what they're doing, mm -hmm. and I like this kind of like old to what feels like '90s yes. kind of like hood girl aesthetic, yes. but then brought to like a high fashion. Yes space and so all of Miami's like Met Gala looks I was mm -hmm. so here for and so I would say that it's something about the way that there are a lot of like young people right now in the game that are doing it that I appreciate. You know what about the City Girls? It's fun. Just mm -hmm. put on something because it made you feel good. Like you can tell they love the high fashion aspect but some outfits is like it's just fun. This was just a fun little moment. And let me tell you, so I have another point on that. Paparazzi, they're catching people who have been so highly curated. And to the average person, we think, oh, that's cute the way so-and-so put that together. And it's like, no. That was sitting on a rack that a stylist picked out two weeks ago. And told her to wear this on this day at this time, going to this place. Mm -hmm. With a picture. <laughs> put it on just like this. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, when we talk about true style, it's a different level. Period. Describe your style in three words. Oh, I thought about this. Oh, I say all the time on my channel that my style pillar is elevated simplicity. So talking about my eBooks, one of my eBooks, I, I break down kind of how people can define their styles. So I would say edgy, elevated simplicity is how I would define my style. That's beautiful. <laughs> what was your first luxury purchase? Ooh, um, 
Okay, so I have to always give a shout out to my mom because at 13, I got my first Dooney and Burke back for my birthday. She was that girl. Done it on their ass at Bart Toe Middle School. Understand when I showed up with that Dooney bucket bag, but that I still have. Are they still in business? Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do Dooney no! like that. Nothing more I used to want than a Dooney and Burke. I'm just saying, they, even they, at like Macy's, I just don't see. I know, which I think there's something. That's strange. They should be with the here we go and, with the coaches, yeah. etc. And the Michael Kors. Yeah. I don't know I what's happening. I think that would be in that area. I just have, I don't agree. See them. They have gone away from that all was of a nice that. Like, that DD logo that I'm happy has gone away. Mm -hmm. They've gone back to the classic all weather leather. So they're around. They're around. Purchase of my own. I got a Gucci Soho bag. Oh, that was that was. Yeah, classic. Look, that was like, a good, like an introductory bag. No, I flipped it. I oh. fl <laughs> like a drug dealer. <laughs> I wish I still had it though. What's your go-to outfit formula? We always talk about outfit formulas, but I'll just go over it real yeah. quick. Outfit formula that is your go-to look when you don't want to think, you don't have time to think, you just need to look and feel your best. It's casual, but dress, you know, it can go anywhere. Brunch, small, kind of, you just, you got to meet somebody really quickly. I like this. You need to throw that thing on. Contrast dressing. Mm, give it to me. Do I'm, I'm gonna do a little high low. I'm gonna do a little high low looks. That, that's that's what. That's still relevant, by the way. You want to be called Janae Naylor, but high low look. It's still the moment. This is what I like. I like the idea of never taking myself too seriously. I'm a denim girl. I'm always going to wear denim, and I like denim a lot with like a really fancy top. And my go-to is typically because I think I have like a nice clavicle. Right and there. the short hair. Yeah, and the short hair. Right? I need a neckline, baby. And the clavicle, the bills can get paid off of that. The clavicle alone will pay a bill or two. And so like a little, like a sweetheart neckline mm -hmm. and a puffy sleeve. And, and That's some, what I almost wore. Girl, so you get it. And some and some denim yeah. and then like a little heel. Easy. Yeah, like I, I, I can shut it down if I choose to. Mm. The idea is that it's meant to just be effortless. What's your most worn item in your closet? Ooh, actually, probably the thing I wore today. Um, I hit the lick at Bottega two years ago, mm, and they were, I know what this is. Remember, they were having a sale, and I just walked in randomly. A leather jacket with gold hardware on sale, fifty percent off. Mm. And that's your most worn. You wear that thing. I mean, it don't even matter with a ball gown, with my pajamas, mm. on the shoulders, on the arms, arms in, arms out. Oh, this is a good one. Who's your style icon? Um, I don't feel as much of this way anymore. Okay. But as a, a young time. as a young person, it was definitely Erica Badu. Oh, I love that. A hundred percent. Well, because I always felt coming from a very small town that there was something like the way I saw the world was very different. Mm -hmm. And there were not a lot of celebrities that reflected that. Mm -hmm. And she and Lauren Hill were the first people who I saw that kind of encapsulated who I felt like I was and my identity through their style. Mm -hmm. And I think Erica, especially from the hair to the hair wraps, the Afrocentrism, mm -hmm. and then later on, just everything she, even now with the gold teeth, like give me like a grill. I will bust down with a grill and have a heart beat. <laughs> I'm waiting on the moment to celebrate a big occasion. I'm coming through with a grill. So another style icon, I would say, and she mentioned this, and I think there was something about like baby queer shy that this person spoke to mm. is uh, Jenna Lyons, specifically her J. Crew day. Yes, I love that. I love, so did you know a lot about her during that time? I did not. So I oh, remember just saw I had just graduated law school and I was like, J. Crew was all of a sudden like, doing something different. What's over here? What's mm. happening at J. Crew? People begin to talk about her and that's when I realized, oh, this person is kind of behind mm. this new brand aesthetic and also, she's fly. Like, I had her same frames and I would do the little, you know, uh, shirts with a collar, a sweater on top and like a statement necklace. Aww. Like, I love for that. sure. Um, and then today, I think I'm kind of going through the generations, girl. Um, I love this. It's a, time period. It's, a, it's a journey. Listen. Today, I, I think I have to give a shout out to like other creators, to be honest with you. Because think about like how much media we consume. Yes, yes and yes. so we are the media now. Realistically, I think people like you, like Monroe, like Karen, and right now, who I like can like eat up her feet with a spoon mm -hmm. is Halicia. Do I, I know Lee. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I did not know that was her name. Is shout yes. out to you, girl. <laughs> um, yes, she, you know what it is. I love Unique. 
like thoughtful, intentional. And I feel like that's what we all have. Like we love our style, but any person with true style can appreciate other style. Period. So I see her aesthetic so clearly in yes. every single thing that she wears. Yes. She's so confident and like, this is my look. Mm -hmm. I love that. And it inspires me. Love that. Let's get into our favorite game. My favorite game. Okay. As seen on TV. Make these just for you. Oh, okay. This is good. Which celebrity wedding ignited your favorite trend of quiet luxury? <laughs> it's I past summer. <laughs> but why was I on her feet last night trying to explain to someone <laughs> <laughs> the new direction her style is taking? Oh. Mentioning stylists. Get into it. Right. But first, go, give us the answer. They may not know. They're probably like, uh, it, is, it? it is. It is. Also, speaking of racial amb ambiguity, uh, one. Because no. when is that gonna come out? <laughs> I say her daddy who? Um, it, it is one known as, as Sophia Richie. Is, is she even 25 years old? I think she's 24. I mean, she is giving like Upper East Side at least 75 years. <laughs> it has got the young girls into quiet look. Like, into, oh. they want to be 75. She got them in chokehold. Um, and it also, I think, is the power of influencer marketing as well. Because somebody, I believe, came to her to curate Absolutely. this aesthetic. Absolutely. Right? I don't think she went from hanging out with the Kardashians to the next day saying, I want to look like a school mom. Yeah, like, I think she I don't... decided. I mean, I also think relationships play a lot. Oh, that's fair. A big role in that's like fair. what you're surrounded by and what's acceptable. That's fair. Right? Like, you're not marrying into a billion dollar family. Wearing a sparkly cat suit, sitting on Scott Disick's lap. Oh, that's this fair. is a very different woman, right? You're probably you're probably you're playing tennis. You're going you go okay. to polo. You, Girl, a little pickleball actually, but they is, probably playing. That's what yeah, I'm you, this is a different lifestyle. Hmm. Is, you're surrounded by different people, so I'm sure she said at some point. So the social life is the had to go. This is the woman I think I want to be. How how do I get there? That's interesting, and that takes a, the team. If she likes it i love it for her someone said recently um and i hadn't thought about this about about sophia richie specifically but that there is like this um connection between the rise of these femininity coaches that <laughs> we've seen everywhere social media youtube oh my God. um this quiet luxury conversation mm -hmm. And also this rise in just like conservative politics mm. as well, right? Like post-Trump era, that kind yeah. of like a MAGA mm -hmm. sentiment. And I'm wondering how all of these things have come together to kind of dog whistle to a younger generation. Ooh. Ooh. This is how you should present as a yeah, woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is what a lady is. This is what a lady, this is what a lady, this, 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 this is how you back up Because it's there. Uh, this... A high value man. That part. Like, sh Lionel Richie ain't her damn daddy. That part! She was rich already! <laughs> uh, which living single character was the first black wedding designer on TV? Oh my gosh, wait. We are living. Hey, single. single. Ooh, Ooh, in the 90s, 90s, 90s kind of world. I'm, I'm glad, glad I got my girl. Head up, what? <laughs> head up. That's right. Oh, my love, am I right? Cute blue. It's high light blue. Like wedding designer on TV? Yeah, yeah. You got to really go through the character's oh, arc to get there. Because it's like her last uh, job. You talking about Ray Jean? Period. Period. Okay. Remember right. when Heavy D was on there? She said the boutique. Okay. Yep. I'm with you. You you had to go through um, it. Yeah, I had to really think about this. Yeah. Yeah, she started. She was at the discount boutique. I remember. And then she was on set. She was, work, you know, she was... Like stylist, she, yeah, and then she did the wedding stuff, and then Heavy D was on there. She worked her way. R.I.P. to Heavy D. R.I.P. to a real one. I know. Yeah, pour something out for him. But uh, let me say something about Ray Jean. Ray Jean and that goddamn Bob. Every when I tell you, all, I didn't want nothing more than a wig. <laughs> Listen, I want to be that fabulous black woman all right the time. there. Ray Jean came down them stairs with a suit on almost every episode. Ray Jean, where you going with that suit on? That was a woman. Hey, Amen. I mean, yeah. I mean she's, she's still here, but. <laughs> What celebrity stylist was behind Lil' Kim's iconic 1999 MTV Awards look? Oh, with the, when Diana Ross like this right here with boop, the boop, boop, boop. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm, that's right. Um, you know, I've never known this. Who did really? this? Yeah, so. I'm gonna give y'all a minute. Wait, was it, was it June? No. But this is the same camp. June was, June really did a lot of the guys. Oh, no, it was, it was, was you it know Misha it is. Hilton? It sure was. Misa Hilton Brim, that's correct. Ding, 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 ding. Good job. Good job. Thank you, thank I, you. I knew you had it in there. The Devil Wears Prada. The first assistant asked Annie Sachs if she has some hideous blank convention to go to. What kind of 
convention was that? It's blank. Convention. You want me to do it in the voice? To go, yeah, yeah. I take take me there, so she Janae. Co she comes out of the office. Oh, she tells her to do something. Pick up something. She tells her to pick up something, and she's like, "You want me to do it?" And she's like, oh, "I'm sorry. Do you have some hideous blank convention to go to?" <laughs> I think I remember this. Wait, was it stockings? Was it flat? You're so close. No, no, no. Because they were, when she went in the office, when she went in the office, this is what they're talking about. And Miranda needs these things, but she needs a bunch of them from Calvin Klein. Calvin Klein, Miranda needs a bunch of them. Jeans? Oh, no. Oh, God. Come on. It's not stockings. No. Okay, Calvin yeah. Klein, underwear. No. Calvin Klein, Calvin Klein. Oh, you're not Calvin gonna guess what you're thinking. Calvin. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Skirts. God dang. From Calvin Klein. Do you have some hideous skirt convention? <laughs> Everyone is, why is no one I'm ready? <laughs> I've said it at least once a week. Yes, same. <laughs> Every impatient person does. Uh, all right. This is an easy one. All right, let's see what we got. In Sex in the City, what handbag is Carrie wearing when she gets mugged on the street? Oh, it was the, uh, the Fendi. It's not a bag, it's a... I don't know. Bitch. <laughs> Hey, in my defense, okay. Tell me about Sex it. in the City time, the original. You was lawyering. I was smoking a lot of weed in at the club. Okay, well, so okay. We're sitting at home watching with our mothers. <laughs> What's doing? Well, I've seen every episode. Opposite. <laughs> no, tell me the answer. I need to know this. What if I end up on like a game show one day? It's not a bag. It's a baguette. Oh, <laughs> I've heard this. Okay, I know I've heard that. this. <laughs> Y'all don't drag me. I'm doing the best that I can. <laughs> okay, next one. Now, if you don't know this, you might not be who I thought you were. <laughs> and I'm just going, that's just what it is. Because okay, right. I, when I, I searched deep. Search for this. Deep. In the 1997 movie, Baps, you know the movie. Tell me you know the movie. I know the movie, I know the movie. Do you need a picture? No, no, I remember. I remember. I remember. When Nisi. Oh, thank you. When Nisi and Mickey arrive in LA, okay. Nisi is telling Mickey how to introduce herself. And this is in here because the, they were fashion icons, if you don't know. That period. Um, if they say, How are you? We say. <laughs> that's, that's the whole phrase. Looking for your daddy's money? No, not quite. Okay. okay. Hey, something, something. Something, something. Big boy! <laughs> Go away! <laughs> living life like Labido Bloche. So, so close. You got the first part right. Living, living. life. Living, living. Li living, living life large. You got, you got living and you got large. You're, I don't you're know, so fucking friend. close. I don't know. Let me give it to you. Please. Living large and taking charge. Big That's boy! Damn. Worst outfit you've worn recently? Ooh. I love this question. All right. Oh, so we got one. I, I do. I thought about this again. Saw Cheese video. Appreciate your friend. And ironically, it's from the same event as hers. By the way, I don't agree with her selection. I feel like the outfit ate. Like, I it, loved it. It's in here. It's in here and it's in here. Yeah, no, this is true. Um, but it there was a thirst that was in the back of my throat. <laughs> you know how you just be that it'd be real parched. Okay, what is this outfit? I don't even for those dads. Like y'all all look so cute at this outfit. <laughs> I know the event you're talking about. I had gotten those Celine gold boxing shorts at the outlet. I was called to put them shorts on and I just could not pull together the right mm. look. And so I put them on with those Paris, Texas I'm silver looking. boots. I'm look li literally her and she in the same. <laughs> In the same picture. In the same picture with outfits that we did not like. Dang. Isn't that wild? The feet hurt so bad. So the shoes just took you out. They, they took me out. And the sh you just feel like you didn't pull it together. Like, I did not pull it together. There's something also about, I think, shorts and a knee boot that can be hard yeah. to do. And I didn't like my makeup as well. I think my lips should have been bolder. You how would you rewear it? I still am stuck on how to wear those damn shorts. I'm gonna be honest now, with I'm you. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. Did you not think of three ways to style these shorts before you bought them? Uh, come on, man. You know, we we all fall short. We do. We this fall was at the outlet. 
And it was at the outlet. She and you was, know, that's when you really... She was in a haze. She was... You're basically drugged. You, at that point, how, how would you style those shorts? Immediately for me, I would do all black. I'm a basic bitch, though. You would do all you black. Know? No, I like that. Um, Black boot. I Maybe okay. a... Or a heel. Maybe a heel because it is an interesting length. It's a little long. Yeah. So maybe we need more leg. Okay. You know? That's fair. Black like those. Actually... Period. I almost wore these, and I should have stuck with my first mind. Yep, yep. Yeah. And then, like, your, oh, you're, like, your little sheer black top with the feathers. Bitch, that's it. That's it. You're throwing a black blazer or a long black coat with all that leg out. A black coat. You should do a black coat. That'd be more dramatic. Yeah, but no, I like it. Big structure, you know. I like where we're going. It's like if Miranda Priestley went to the hood. Period. It's like Miranda Priestley and cookie lying. <laughs> if you had a blank check. Ooh. And could only use it in one store. <laughs> where would I spend oh, Where would you spend it? This is so tough. I know. Because part of me wants to say Saint Laurent. Mm -hmm. But you got to buy all the things. And I got body. And uh, French brands can be hard for the girls who have curves mm -hmm. and for the girls who have big feet. It would be Celine. Mm. And, and let me tell you why. So I think I get, I get like the what do they call the the Philo files the girls who love yeah yeah Philo and are ready for her an era. for her new it's brand. Over. But not one hundred percent my aesthetic, right? How he will take that like blazer but do a really interesting cut on mm -hmm. it and make you just drool over it. He knows what he's doing, and so I don't have any other Celine ready to wear. No, I did something something else from the outlet, but. Aside from those three pieces <laughs> of Celine Ray to wear. And I, I think the cuts are a little bit more like curvy girl friendly yeah. too. It would probably be Celine. Get it. <laughs> so I get it. Wish so um surprisingly there are not any bags right now. Same. I feel yeah, I feel like um I had really, really wanted a Goyard piece and when I got it, you I was like scratch that itch. We'll pop I'm it up. good. It's beautiful. Um, so since then it's jewelry, dog. Like mm. I told you this before. That's like, a, I mean that's a Theme. Yeah, I am an accessories girl, like down to like having that hair and bone chain a grandma put on layaway for me down at Walmart. You wanna know my first chain? What was it? You'll girl? never fucking guess. No, I know what it was. Was it the Figaro? <laughs> Tell us. This should be my fun fact. <laughs> <clears throat> it was a no limit chain. <laughs> no limit. So I thought I told you. Yes. 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 Seventh grade. What? I needed it. <laughs> I was a No Limit soldier. Me and X? Uh, I want a time piece. So this is my kind of like burner watch that I've got in the meantime. It's a vintage Gucci watch that I love. And, oh, you talk about this a lot of times, right? About like getting the thing that is less expensive to let you know whether or not you will wear it. Yeah. And, like a Rolex, more yeah. attainable. With or an AP, which is like a vintage AP. It's my dream mm -hmm. watch, a Royal Oak. Okay. How or when did you find your personal style? Mm. This was a journey for me because I like markedly remember not having it. Mm, fascinating. Yeah, girl. So I think I thought I had it. Don't we all? <laughs> but I did not. So much of it was like rooted in um, a lack of self-confidence, honestly, Janae. Like I used to think that I wasn't pretty. And so I had to look very different. Right? And my hair had to be bright red. I had to have on the most kind of outlandish to outfit. For what you weren't confident. I was consistently in a space where I felt like I had to overcompensate mm. because like me alone, I was not pretty enough to kind of like stand in a natural beauty. And so what people probably saw as like an edgy aesthetic mm. really was just me being afraid to show myself and who I am. I was hiding behind all of that. Like look at that, not me. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. My hair is too kinky. My nose is too wide. My skin is too dark. Like, I'm not pretty enough. And so maybe you'll like what I'm wearing. Or at the very least, it'll just be different enough to make you, like, not focus on me. Oh, mm. that's a good word. Yeah, it was, it was, I was using my style as armor and not not to, like, amplify my natural aesthetic. I think what happened was... To bring things full circle, when I started to pare things down a little bit mm -hmm. and to consume less, it naturally enhanced my style because that's when also my confidence started to increase as well. Talking about my time at Saint Laurent, I think I learned so much about like building a classic classic wardrobe mm -hmm. then as well. I can't afford to buy Saint Laurent, you know, 
yet uh, for every single piece. But what I can do is think about, okay, if I am shopping at more affordable places, how can I take those same principles and apply it to Still me? Still thoughtful with your purchases, no matter the price point. Conscious consumption. Mm -hmm. It's time to play who slayed okay, harder. Okay, let me see. Okay. So this is the Glamour Women of the Year Awards. So it wasn't much going on, so bear with us. Uh, but I got some looks. So first up, we have Natalie Emanuel in Alberta Ferretti and Amita Suman in the black. So who slayed harder? Mm, she's, she's, it's percolating. Um, what do you think? Just talk us through your thoughts. Nobody. <laughs> If I had to give it to somebody, if I if I had to, I'm going to say um, the a very kind woman on the left in the silver. Okay, lovely. Okay. Um, is there a reason or should we just move on? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think <clears throat> when I see pieces, I often think, and this is my own personal bias, and we talked about this throughout okay. this. I often think that people are over styling mm. their team whomever they're over styling them so with the black dress there's a lot going on and i don't really get why her hair is up and is mimicking the dress mm. right i would have just like give me a slick, sleek wet look i'll leave because i like this dress it could be a moment it could be no i, I totally agree and then the pump also so give me a strappy sandal it's confusing me that's that's confusion so the silver that's a good lip that's a good lip. Um, I don't know that I would have done the necklace. I agree. And you know, things like this are a little difficult too because I'd be one to see gowns I get at these shows, but maybe it's just in her posture and you could see it more when she moved. But I don't like that we cannot see any part of her foot. Yeah, but we could have lost the necklace for sure. And I don't like purses on red carpet. Right? Give it to your, <laughs> it to your <laughs> Moving on. All right. This is Lashana Lynch in mm -hmm. Mason Ribby. Okay. And Cynthia Erivo in oh, Louis Vuitton. Yeah. 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 This is actually hard for me because I like them both for different reasons. Yeah. But I'm a Cynthia Stan, so I got to give it to her, yeah. actually. And, and I, we have to call out... <sighs> the, something's not right here. Something is... Is, is right. it the proportions again? No, what do you think I it is? I mean with the makeup. The color... Oh... See, I like, thought this is the same event. This, this is the same red carpet. The screen is a little bit far from me. Yeah, I don't. I'm not wearing my it. bifocals, so let me just have a moment to the flash. It's flashing. Mm -hmm, that that flashback. But that is, um, it's 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 taken away from the look for sure. It's a little ghastly. It's a little ghostly. Yeah, it's a little Casper. Like I don't even know. It feels like also maybe they did a little bit too much um, like bronzer in the wrong shade for mm. a dark melanated person. Mm. Yeah, that's this probably what happened. This all the full package, you know? And so it's okay. hard for me to kind of extrapolate one thing because it really is about the total package. And going back to things that we wouldn't wear but we appreciate, there's a lot that Cynthia wears that I would not wear. Mm. I would never put this on. Yeah. But it works for her and it's true to her style aesthetic. She carries everything with a lot of confidence too. Like even this may be something she didn't love, but we would never know. We would never know. Cause she walks like she a baddie. This was Ooh. made for me. Ooh, in every I she love a it. Yeah. So talented too. I stand. Beautiful gowns. <laughs> gowns, gowns. <laughs> Next is Alex Scott and Nina Ricci and Amelia Jones. And they didn't list where her outfit was from, but I gave you two suits. Okay, I, I appreciate this. I appreciate this. Okay, the overstyling on the left. Oh, and I love new Nina Ricci. And I love I, this look on the runway. You don't want, I mean, I know it's hard to beat the model. Yeah. But usually you can just put your sauce on it. Yeah. And she didn't put, she didn't put her sauce on mm -mm. it. Yeah. I, I, I think the hat was unnecessary. I think the layered necklaces were unnecessary. But I think the look on the right, it's fun. You're going to be, when you, when you see the runway look, it's devastating. It's devastating as far as how, how, how it compares. Yes. It's like the hat made it. But I don't know what is happening. You you guys are seeing it. That is oh. like, I want to wear that. And the fact that uh, a man is wearing it too gives it like this beautiful androgyny that it's, I love. It's a great example of being thirsty. Mm. Now, obviously this is alone. So this is probably the same suit. Oh, that's a good point. This is probably yeah. the same suit. So one, it doesn't fit. The hat doesn't fit. This is the same hat. I'm looking at it. I'm sure she's sponsored by this jeweler. 
right? So they were like, you know, instead of the flowers, flowers. we're gonna do some diamonds. Get the flower. Get the. That's what the people told you to wear with the thing. My fave, not my fave. And you know, I'm here for a black tailor suit. But so you going with the other one? I'm going with the other one because also I I don't know this person. I don't either. But she's young. And she's there for a good time. She is. She got her a little, um, what was that movie from the early 2000s that the woman was in? You've Got Mail. So she got she that little, a little haircut, Meg Ryan. She got a little Meg Ryan haircut. I love You've Got Mail. I just watched that on the plane. I love that movie. And then she put on a red lip with the white. She's giving, like, I'm doing something grown up, but I'm still fun and young. And I'm here for that. Okay, next up is Anita Ronnie. And Freya Allen is mm-hmm. in Roberto Freddy. Okay. Um, a lot of these people are UK based. This oh, okay. So this is why we don't so necessarily quiet. know them. A fortunate moment it's for a me. It's a conundrum. For yeah, sure. this is a hated it. Um, <laughs> where do we go? Where do we it's, go? Um, it was a rough week for the red carpet. Okay. Oh, man, it was. Yeah. Um, like, this is one of those, I just need you to, you know, gun against uh, up to your head. You got to. You got to pick you one. You got to pick one. You don't okay. wear it, but you got to yeah. pick it. We're going to go with the one with the thigh meat. I agree. Yeah, we got to go with the thigh meat. I'm always down for a little thigh meat. And I think if you're going to wear a pump, this is how to wear a pump. Yeah. Because we have so much leg. Yeah, yeah. The leg is long. There's no doubting that. No doubt about that. And I think this is a good example of like when it's so obviously, uh, so obvious that the person is not wearing something with confidence. Mm -hmm. Because this is a nice dress. Yeah. No, it is. It is. There's nothing wrong, but she's not giving me a moment. Uh, you got your whole... Gr- you all went, of that's The out. split is up to, the up to your pelvis. And you're not giving me s- sultry, powerful lady. You, this yeah. should be giving me um, basic instinct. Can I see your hair? Because that goes back to kind of like a good <laughs> sweet back moment. Yeah. It's not. It looks like she... she was running around a lot of errands today. Yeah. She said, I, oh, I got so, that oh, glamour. Oh, got that thing. Yeah. I yeah. got that glamour. <laughs> let me, let me put on my outfit. Okay. Go to the thing. Last one. All right. I'll last one. Let's see. Last. Uh, this is Vogue Williams and Hallie Bailey. Oh. Hallie is in a brand I've never heard of. Nicole Felicia Couture. Okay. Period. That's got to be a black person. You already know. For my personal aesthetic. It, the other dress is so you. You already know. Hallie Bailey's is so me. Y- yes, actually. And I feel like the other person, just judging by the proportions of the picture, is probably also my height. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Being that she barely fit in the front. Yes. <laughs> yes, baby. She don't got no feet or nothing. <laughs> right. Oh, they. And so, uh, represent for the tall girls. Yeah. And also, that, that little peak of skin is my spirit it's, animal. And it's it's a, the a perfect amount because this is a heavy dress. If yeah. If it was a dress, it would be like, are you a lot. Oscars? Yeah. But now it feels cute and sexy yes, and uh, fun and can i see your hair because i can't tell if it's short or if it's pulled back it's pulled back and so this is what we've, we've we've needed that's a style it's style that thing back pop on a red lip and she has on very little if any jewelry maybe some studs in her ears right so we're not getting a necklace but and a thing a and a thing and a thing nothing's because this is a lot that is so embellished we don't need anything else and so i think i know this is not about a styling tip but i think one has emerged for me at least Mm -hmm. it is less can be more just take off the last thing you put on as i'm wearing 25 rings and that's different though (laughs) and our last question before you go this is the one that everyone must answer okay leave us your number one tip to finding personal style or starting your personal style journey. Declutter. Ooh. Ooh, I know Declutter. that I know that hurts some of y'all. I, I know. Every time I say it. <laughs> Just hit you right. Y'all there. act like I invented it. <laughs> Shout out to Marie Kondo. Okay. The the, the Kamari method for, for decluttering. Cause that really informed a lot of my opinion, to be completely honest. Really? Mm-hmm. Even down to the way that she talked about like organizing your drawers and how you fold your pieces. I'm just slightly type A. Mm-hmm. So that helps. So I was gonna say that- the way you're raised helps with how you're able to declutter. I think. Yeah. Like I've never held on to I wanna say memories. I I just but I grew up like 
moving a lot where it's just like yeah. and living in apartments like we just didn't have like a garage or an attic to be like here's 10 boxes of shit from when you were five <laughs> yeah I, like i don't need it <laughs> right so it's very easy for i still oh. can move like that but if you were like grew up with a hoarder or just a where you guys always just had a lot of stuff you know yeah. it's very different that's so true Jeanette, because i think about how when i grew up i shared like six small drawers with my aunt in a small bedroom with an even smaller closet it used to cause me so much anxiety and so i always promised myself that when i got older i was going to create a life and curate a closet where i didn't have to fight to find my mm. things and then that goes back to me also saying earlier that i feel like i found my style when i started to um collect less mm. More style list things. Um, and so I talk about decluttering in my ebook, how to declutter your wardrobe and curate a style you love for that purpose because Link below. getting stuff out of my closet, I think it has been definitely like positively correlated with me feeling the most confident in mm. how I show up. But declutter is your number one tip. It has start to there be. before you even start at because that's the thing. Why are you bringing stuff in? When we then you gotta work around. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> Shundo. We're, we're, we're not, um, not only are we not consuming consciously, but I also feel like we're not thinking about how can I fill in what I don't have. Mm -hmm. And so you just have stuff on top of stuff and you don't really like any of it, but you kind of like it, but you don't. Mm -hmm. And so that it just becomes more of a kind of cluster of stuff that you don't need and that you get lost in. Tashira, where can everyone find you? All across the internet. Um, you can find me at politicsandfashionblog.com. I'm blogging again, Janae. I missed it. I love that. I missed it, man. Bring back the long form content for us geriatric millennials. <laughs> Just want a nice, quiet read. <laughs> put my Just bonnet want to on. Curl up on the couch. Put my robe on and a nice isotone or slipper <laughs> and just read a blog or two. Uh, so we're bringing that back. Love that. Um, also, obviously, on YouTube, Politics of Fashion, TikTok, Instagram, and my podcast, Justice Says, coming back very soon for its uh, fourth season. It's That's been amazing. three seasons already. Yeah. It's seasons. so good. Thank you. What is, tell, tell them what it's about really quick. It is about um, self-care, social justice, and really feminism at a big age and mm -hmm. what it means to like curate and create a life that you love on your own terms, period. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Um, so that that's the show. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye! Bye.